Tactical Rock and Roller here. We're going to go over the Smith & Wesson uh, TSW. Uh, this was originally a 356. That's a 356 caliber. This round is no longer uh, in manufacture. I believe I've seen it's available in Europe uh, uh, on the internet, but in America you will not find this round. So it has been converted into a 9mm with the threaded barrel. Um, as you can see, threaded barrel, uh, 9mm stamp on that. Uh, but this was originally uh, part of the Team Smith & Wesson. You can see the Performance Center stamp on that with the TSW uh, stamp right there, just to prove. Now I believe that this is all set on a Smith & Wesson 4006 series platform. So that's similar to what, what a 40 cal, I believe. Um, and I believe that's the most similar as you can see. It kind of looks like a 1911 almost. But in comparison, I believe it's set on a 4006 Smith & Wesson platform. So for uh, takedown purposes, um, that's the best way to go. But I will show you that right here, right now. Also, um, this is an ac excellent weapon. Uh, apparently, this round was originally designed by the team for uh, target practice and target shooting, but then was banned in the league. And anything that is banned, one must have. So, I have it. Uh, again, we're going to go over basic disassembly of the weapon. First thing you do, as always, is make the gun safe. I'm going to drop the mag. Mag release is right here. Mag release on that. Uh, drop the mag. Again, this mag uh, says 12 on there plus one in the head. So I'm sure you can get extenders for that. Um, I do have a bunch of mags. Uh, no extenders though. If you have any, let me know. Uh, this has the Trijicon night sights on there. Uh, you won't be able to see that glow, but they do glow in the dark with a threaded barrel. Uh, so this is a very effective weapon. A must have if you can find one. So basic disassembly of the weapon first. Make it safe. Mag release right here. Hit the mag release. Drop the mag. Gonna say. Then we're gonna visually inspect. Once you know the gun is safe, we will, we will attempt to disassemble. Uh, notice the notch right there. We're going to place that over the circle and hold it with an overhand grip. At the same time that this notch is over the circle, we're going to apply pressure to the uh, other side of the takedown pin and it will come right out. So, overhand grip, as you can see, notch just over the takedown pin. Comes right out, as you see. Barrel then slides right off, the slide and the barrel slide right off. Receiver down. Now, th this weapon uses a two recoil spring assembly on top of the stainless steel guide rod. One big, one small. Obviously, the small one goes inside the big one. Both sit on the guide rod assembly. Uh, Ruger uses this same action. Actually, the barrel is very similar to the Ruger as well, which it just has a, kind of a one notch right there for everything to sit in. It almost has a similar shape to the Glocks where it's tiered, but the, the stepping and the tiering is much more pronounced than Glocks and Smith and & Wessons, whereas this is rounded off and almost more similar uh, to the Ruger, where it just has one place for you to put in. And again, I went over a uh, guide rod and recoil assembly jam issue in the Glock. That's the reason why I point all of this out. So that's your basic disassembly of the TSW uh, 356 converted to 9mm. And then we're just going to put it back together. As always, everything in reverse.
So we're gonna put the barrel back in. Again, this is a threaded barrel. And it does have a, a bushing in here since it's threaded. So it makes the barrel placement a little bit tricky, but I found from the bottom, just kind of tilted forward and it might help that barrel slide right in, which it did. Seat back in its place, guide rod assembly, small, big, and they are symmetrical. So don't hurt yourself putting them back together. Just like that. And then the spring is gonna go into the hole here. The back of the guide rod assembly, the flat part, is gonna sit into the one and only notch. And it will sit like that. So I've noticed that when you put the guide rod assembly back onto the barrel and the slide, there's a little bit of a sag or overlap with the spring. You can tell it kind of bubbles out a little bit. Um, but that is correctly in place just due to the two springs and it does seem like the larger spring is a lot bigger and like it's similar to like the Walther P22 uh, but, but now that you see that that's back in place as you can see the guide rod assembly barrel is back in place then we will just notice two rail system again some guns have the like the Rugers use one rail system uh, the Smith & Wesson using two rail system front back here so that's where the slide will sit on the one thing that I've noticed with reassembly is you'll notice all of these mechanical parts here back here just before just before the hammer now if the hammer is back these parts will not go down all the way and it will be difficult to reassemble your weapon so we do not want that hammer back the hammer up and then back of the slide over the first set of rails and you see it snags here we're just going to use our fingers to push all of these parts down the slide will come right back again it's like three or four different pieces that you must pull, pull down simultaneously. Just pull it back, and then just to put the pin back, the same thing in reverse, you're gonna take this notch, which I've pointed out before, hold it over the circle again. I'm gonna hold it there, and just reinsert the pin, and it'll drop right in. No tools required. Overhand grip to hold it in place. Right in. Let's go. As you can see, the pin is in place. Tension keeps everything in place. Back in. Pull the trigger. Functional weapon. Uh, Tactical rock and roller again. Smith and Wesson TSW 356 converted to 9 millimeter. That's tactical rock R O C K N R O L L A. Rock and roller at gmail.com. Uh, please let me know.